Christy Leonard with the Leaders Realty and today we are here with Mike of Set Studio and he's going to tell us all about the custom home building process. Thanks for being here, Mike. Absolutely. I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. Well, first question is, how does a buyer go about acquiring land? You know, there's several different ways and, and, and one of those things is sometimes clients come to us and they already have a property. So we can throw that on the side. However, what we often like to do is sit down with the client and find out their wants and needs, find out if school districts or something that's important to them, work, things like that. And then we try to tailor down the areas that would work best for them. At that point, you know, people like you can help find those lots for those individuals as well. And we also may have something in the pipeline that we're currently working with that may work for them as well. Awesome. And so first step is acquiring land. Next step would be working with an architect or what is kind of your custom building process? What would the next step be? Yes. And from there, we kind of call it what I call the dating period. I like to sit down okay. with the client and find out what their styles are, what their wants and their needs are. A lot of times their needs will overweigh their wants and it just depends on budget as well. Sure. Um, not our, all architects are created the same. Um, some are very budget friendly and, and some are not, you know, and it really depends on the client and the project that we're servicing as to where we actually take them. And we want them to interview the, the architect as well, because at the end of the day, architects are artists and we want to make sure that they get exactly what it is that they're looking for. Absolutely. And so when they are going through the architectural process, is that something where that is all handled directly with the architect and they're paying the architect or is that part of their contract with y'all set studio for the build? How yeah, does that work? It's actually part of our contract as well. Okay. Um, we will often have the client contract directly with the architect, but I feel it's always really good to have a builder involved in that design process. Okay. A lot of times you can move a wall six inches and save thousands of dollars. You know, again, at the end of the day, architects are artists and sometimes they don't have the technical aspect altogether. And if, if there's the ability or the, or the time period that we can step in and remove a big steel I-beam by moving the wall six inches, that's where it really helps. So we like to be involved in that process as well. And we do that on a separate contract outside of the construction. We call that kind of the design phase. Okay. You know? So you would go with land acquisition, then design phase. Now tell me about the process of like choosing the selections. Yes, and for every job, again, it's a little bit different. Sometimes we do those in-house, just depending on budget. Okay. And a lot of times we'll hire outside um, interior designers. And with that said, they're very much so, again, we want to line clients up with individuals that, that, that they mate with well. At the end of the day, we look at it as it's almost a marriage because this is, often can be a 24-month period in which you're doing this from start to finish, from design to actually handing keys over. So we want to make sure that everybody is very cohesive and understands and communication is very good as well. Absolutely. So how, when a buyer is going through this process and they're wanting to build, how, what does the budget look like? How are you going about that as far as like the contract and upfront? Because obviously throughout the process, are you ha are they selecting everything upfront? Are they doing change orders along the way? How do they get a grasp on what their overall cost is going to be? I would love to say that it's stamped and there's, you know, one through 10, but unfortunately it's not. We love to get most of the selections upfront so we have the largest handle of everything humanly possible. There's always going to be changes. Um, and I think a lot of times individuals have a hard time seeing something um, on paper or two dimensionally versus actually seeing it in front of them. So you're always going to know that there's going to be changes of some sort while we like to tailor that down to as few as possible. In most cases, most custom homes that we do now, especially because of COVID, are cost plus. Um, and with that said, we definitely come up with a budget and we try to work backwards, right? It's catch 22, right? I know people want to get a great deal and they want to spend as little as possible, but at the end of the day, we also have to understand what their constraints are. So if, you know, if a client comes in and, and $2 million for a build is absolutely it, and that's got to encompass land, that's going to negate and limit on where they can buy land or how much house that gives them. So understanding a budget upfront and expectations is huge when it comes to figuring out contracts, budgets, and selections. 
And if a buyer's looking for a property of this quality and just so they can kind of wrap their head around pricing, mm -hmm. what should they ballpark? What should they estimate price per square foot? Yeah, on the low end, we're about three and a quarter to 350 a square foot. And that typically will include, you know, your architecture and your construction. The land's gonna be the oddball because mm -hmm. you can, that's where, you know, the price can really jump up or, sure. or really come down. So how do you go about the payout schedule with a buyer? So it depends. Sometimes, you know, we deal a lot with cash buyers and then we also deal with banks. So interim construction financing is something that varies amongst banks. What I like to do and what I like to guide my clients to do is deal with local banks or Texas banks. You know, we deal a lot with Happy Bank or Independent Bank. And what we have found in the years, and I'm gonna age myself because I've been doing this for 26 years now, um, is box banks don't understand Austin. You can have a market can be completely different on one street and the street one over is, is night and day. And some of the only people that will understand that are local banks. So we like to steer our clients to local banks um, because they understand the market. Most um, banks nowadays even are used to seeing cost plus contracts. And even in a cost plus contract, we love to give um, sizable contingencies just so that you can take, you know, so that you have some breathing room, if you would, if you wanted to make a change order or if a commodity went through the roof, um, but you can also save money on it as well. So that's really kind of what we lean into as small local banks to do the interim construction financing. And then when they're doing the payout schedule, is it typically at like, okay, slabs poured, there's a payout, framing's done. How does that structure work? It's gonna depend on it's the house vary. at the end. Yeah, yeah, you know, if it's a smaller house, that will go in stages like that. You know, foundation, dry in, things of that nature. If it's a larger house, we do it on a monthly basis. Okay. Um, just depending on where it is. You can build 3,000 square foot or you can build 10,000 square foot. Sure. The ones that are 10,000 square foot, we're probably doing a draw once a month. Um, just because of the time in between the stages and we still have to, you know, be able to pay the subs and our contractors as well, so. Absolutely. Now, as far as we've talked about land acquisition, ideally the architect and design would be done on the front end so that everything's ready to go, have a good idea on cost. There may be some change orders along the way, that's typical, but you're really trying to minimize that. And then they're gonna have their payout schedule along the way. Is there anything that um, is kind of unforeseen for someone who's never done a custom home build before that we haven't touched on yeah, that they should be aware of? Absolutely, you know, you don't know what you don't know at the sure. end of the day, right? And sometimes there's costs that come up that you don't physically see. For instance, if you put, you know, if you have a larger house and you need a larger water meter, at least in the city of Austin, in most cases, you are having to cut the street open, get into the water main, and actually produce a, a new main for your house, if you would. Those are expensive things. Absolutely. And you can't necessarily see those. So some of those things that, that you run into, especially if the lovely city of Austin, their records aren't great, you know, they may say that a water tap is five foot from the curb and it's on the other side of the street. There are always going to be some things that are just unforeseen and, and, and be ready to expect those things. Um, there's always going to be something in a project. And I, I like to say it's never the problem. It's always the solution and how you fix it and how you handle that when each one of those things comes up. So be prepared for things to happen um, and also be prepared to be able to make decisions quickly and what that will allow is a faster construction process as well as a timely and cost-effective process. Awesome. And now, what does your warranty look like? So we do, a, in the state of Texas, we've got to do a standard uh, one-year builder, two-year mechanical, and now the state of Texas has changed the structural from 10 years to six years. Um, and that's, you have to carry that by the state of Texas. Um, and a lot of times we will also add on third party um, insurance policies or warranty policies as well. So it just varies on the product and the client. Okay, perfect. 
And now, why don't we tell the viewers a little bit about you, how mm -hmm. you got into the construction business, how long you've been building homes, and kind of what got you into the business? Yeah, goodness. Um, and again, I'm going to go back and date myself. Um, I started building when I was 24 years old. Um, prior to that, I sold building materials. Um, so I knew the industry, but on a on another side of it, if you would. So a lot of those individuals that I worked with, I still buy from. So I learned at a young age that I buy from people, not companies. So I've got, you know, salesmen that may have changed several companies and I follow them, you know, and I, that, that's one thing that's important to me is relationships. So I started out building a bunch of homes for the city of Austin. I must have built, I don't know, well over a hundred for the city of Austin. Um, and then got into some commercial, built a couple bars, a couple restaurants, built the, the first Lavaca Street bar for a great buddy of mine, um, and just loved construction. I don't feel like I work. Um, I love what I do. And I think that, you know, it, it's rare that that happens these days. But it's just something I'll do till, till the day I die, you know. We started out doing single family stuff, and now we do what I call micro developments inside the city where we'll you know, purchase half a block or something like that and really make an impact to the market with the product that we bring. Amazing. Well, I have to say you're so down to earth. I mean, I think any buyer would love to work with you and your company and it shows that you really care. I appreciate that very much. Absolutely. And what is the typical time frame for typical, building it? Typical time frame after permits, because it's okay. really gonna, the city of Austin, you, you, they're doing better. So we're, we're at about a, month and a half to two month process on building permits now. And we like to give, you know, say 10 to 12 months just in case, right? You know, every, every once in a while we run into some rainy times and uh, it's nice to have a little bit of cushion there, you know, and if we can stay on track, make sure we get our selections in a timely manner, those are timelines that we can definitely manage. Awesome, and so how long should someone, you know, obviously how long someone takes to find a piece of property, there's no telling. You could have something they like or they could be taking quite some time to find something. But once they acquire the land, how long does a typical buyer take to, for like architectural design and for interior selections? What are you seeing on average there? On average, 18 to 24 months. And okay. some of that is just because there's some dealings with the city of Austin at the same time. Okay. Um, and unfortunately, we're kind of at their mercy when it comes to some of those things. And then it's just, you know, bringing the orchestra all together. You know, you've got several different trades at any given time that you manage to work together. Okay. I like to give six months for the design phase just cause um, that should give you enough time. Okay, so you're thinking six months for design phase mm -hmm. and then like 10 to 12 months once you have permitting, Absolutely. which that's where it's getting you to 18 plus yes. months. Okay, so my next question is, who is the main point of contact? How often are buyers throughout the build process getting updates on the build of their home? Absolutely, we've got a few superintendents okay. and I'm a very active member as well. Um, you'll also see my wife Bristol on site too. We all like to be involved. You know, Typically you will always have a superintendent that you go to that will handle the day to day. And then I'll get involved on the higher level things and especially sometimes pulled into even helping with selections as well. So we're a small kind of family run business and we're all heavily involved, but the true point of contact would be a superintendent that's assigned to the job. Amazing. Well, Bristol is the absolute cutest and I know that she would give the best design selections ever. So she is definitely an asset to have for sure. Well, is there anything, um, any stories about like the process with the buyer or anything that I'm overlooking that's something, I mean, you gave a really great example about just the water meter with the city and how that can be an unexpected expense. And so it's good to buffer in additional outside of your budget for those unexpected costs. But is there anything else that um, we haven't touched on? Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that I often like to tell clients is there's a great website called House. Are you familiar with that? I am, yeah. And a lot of times I'll have them open an idea book and just start throwing everything in there. And that's super helpful to us because at the end of the day, what's going to help your process is being prepared, understanding what you like, because um, that's huge. Sometimes people just don't know what they like. Um, 
also understanding and being able to maintain a schedule. That's, that's huge. Um, as a builder, we give timelines and say, guys, we need to have cabinet selections by this date. And if they take four to six months for you to come up with them, that's going to delay that job. And those are things that, that you just need to look at on the, on the forefront of the, thing, uh, of the entire project. So understand your budget, understand what you like, understand what you want, and understand sometimes what you can live without because of sometimes it's those unforeseen things that you may run into. And other than that, communication is key and it can be a smooth process. Awesome. Well, this has been so informative. I am so glad that we got to take the time and be here with you today, Mike. You have been amazing. and. Everyone needs to build a custom home with Set Studio. They're absolutely fabulous. And reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.